Staying connected, shit number five. So the world's gone bonkers. Everyone's in a crisis. And many of the things that we believed in, in the past are proving to be unstable. We're, but that's not the first time. Okay, Our people have been there before. We've been in moments of crisis. When we got out of Egypt and we stood at the, in the desert and we could just see the water in front of us and the Egyptians behind us and we completely froze and we got through that one. And then the sea split, we got through that as well. And then there were many other crises moments over the periods of our history. But let me take you to one that's perhaps less well known to most people. Chapter 7 in the book of Jeremiah. It's one of my favourite chapters, an amazing chapter. It's actually quite a famous chapter. And listen to what happens. So Jeremiah the prophet is living in the time of the first temple. Hashem sends him to the temple gates and gives him a message. And that message is... Very, very powerful and very, very relevant in my opinion today. You see, we put our trust and belief in the structures that we feel comfortable believing in. But at times Hashem says, nah, that, you're missing the point completely. So Jeremiah was sent to the Beis Hamikdash, which means that the people in his time must have been good enough to be worshipping Hashem properly. They were bowing down to Hashem, so that's great. But then he says to the people, improve your, your ways and your deeds. And then if you improve, you'll get to live. You'll get to live in the land of Israel. But then he says, listen, but then he obviously realized that the people were holding on to a false belief. What was that false belief? Don't believe in those false words that say to you, Heichal Hashem, Heichal Hashem, Heichal Hashem, Heimah. That the temple stands and somehow this temple will be a force field and will protect you from any evil that might come about. Don't think that just because you've got you've got your place of worship that you can act as you want, do what you want and Hashem won't destroy. Sometimes Hashem will destroy. If you, if you improve your ways, your deeds and your ways, if you truly do justice between people and then a classic style of the prophet then lists various things that might have been going wrong do not oppress the stranger the orphan and the widow so look after the most vulnerable members of society don't shed innocent blood in this place do not go after the gods of others to your own harm then i will cause you to dwell in this place in the land that i gave to your forefathers forever and ever but he says you're not behaving like that at all. You are murdering. Now, murder has a whole spectrum. It's obviously taking someone's life, but we we can character assassinate, we can humiliate. These are all, in my opinion, stages on the spectrum of murder. What do we put our trust and our faith in? Yes, we're not bowing to literally statues that have been manufactured in a, in a statue factory, but what do we put our faith in? I often think, don't look at this, these texts as being, oh, these backwards ancient Jews. No, translate it into a modern context. What do, what do we trust in other than Hashem? Where do we put? Our, I, well, what are we looking at as being our cause for salvation? And then the prophet wants to do what all good people want to do. He wants to run and he wants to daven. And Hashem says to him, No, 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 Jeremiah, it's not working. This time, do not pray for this people. Do not speak up for them with a cry and a prayer. And don't entreat me, for I will not listen to you. Do you not see what they do in their cities? And it speaks about how intent, it gives a it's beautiful, I think, in terms of poetry or imagery, but it's not good religiously. The sun gathers wood. The father makes the fire. The mother makes the food, which they then offer to an idol, to a god of the heavens. And they pour out wine to gods of others in order to anger Hashem. You have entire families that are caught up in an ideology, in a way of life that's antithetical to the Jewish approach to living. And on this time, Hashem says, no, no, no. Jeremiah, don't. It's not going to happen this time. Don't altifkabi, don't daven to me. And then the, the, the chapter gets worse and worse. 
until eventually we have a verse that we all know the opposite one. We know it from Sheva Brochus. So the, here the prophet says, Vishvati Mare Yehuda, I'm going to bring to an end, eliminate from the cities of Judah, from the, the streets of Yerushalayim, Kol Sosoin Vakol Simcha, Kol Chason Vakol Kala, the words we sing as Sheva Brochus. But this is the opposite. This is the negative ones. Only later on do we get the renewal of those sounds. Ki the land will become a ruin. But always, in a later chapter, things get better. So the happy moments of crisis where we want to believe in the old structures of being our salvation. It's going to be okay. We can just go to our shawls. We can go have those buildings and we'll be okay. Look what we create. Look what we have built. I'll take you to another example. The final prophet, Malachi. Malachi is the Haftarah for the Shabbos, Shabbos HaGadol. The bit we read on Shabbos is not the bit I'm going to teach you. This is the bit I want to teach you on the first chapter. It's only three chapters long. But this is what the prophet Malachi, the final prophet, had to say. Hashem, Hashem says, I love you, the Jewish people. And we then responded, How have you loved us? So Hashem says, there were, there were brothers. There was Yaakov and there was Esav. And, and I loved Yaakov. And you guys are the descendants of Yaakov. As Esav's son, Esi. And I hated Esav. And I destroyed his areas. And he thinks he's going to rebuild. But he's not going to be successful. Your eyes will behold it. And you will see. That it's, not going to, it's not going to happen. And Hashem will be glorified. But then Hashem says, listen. A son will honor his father. And a servant will honor his master. So that's. And that's the premise. That's how normal life goes. Now Hashem says, well, what am I? Am I really Avinu Malkeinu or Adon? Am I really your master as in Adnai? That you, are you see me as your master? So he says, if, I, if I'm a father, where is my honor? If I'm a master, if I'm the Adon, if I'm your boss, then where is the fear that workers have for their, for their superiors? And Hashem then talks to the Kohanim that you've just, those people who are meant to represent Hashem, you've, have, you've disgraced the name of Hashem. So how have we loathed you? The Kohanim respond. Hashem says, because you think that worshipping God is repulsive. You, you're, you've lost respect for what, in those days, for the sacrificial right, how it all works with the Korbanos, with the sacrifices. When you, but, it's, but let's translate this. When you present a blind animal for sacrifice, is nothing wrong. When you invest your money in your own life and you don't, and you, you get angry when you spend money for God, you put your priorities in other areas. But when it comes to Hashem, you bring something that's third rate. Would you really present such an animal to, to, to your governor? If you had to give a gift to a friend for a Shabbos meal, would you bring something that was chipped or broken? Would you... Would you settle for something less than the most perfect? Of course you wouldn't. And then he says something so shocking. It's so shocking because it's it's so relevant. Mi gam bachem v'yizgar de la sayim v'lo sa'iru mizbechi If only there was someone among you who would shut the temple doors so that you could not light a fire for the altar in vain. I have no desire for you, said Hashem, and I will not accept an offering from your hand. Terrifying. Shut the temple doors. Shut the doors of the shul. It all seems a little bit like things are repeating themselves. But there have been times in our past where the base of Miklos was ultimately destroyed, or Hashem suggests to shut things down because we're just not getting Jewish life right. Where do we put our emphasis? Where do we invest our money? Is it to impress our neighbours? Is it to make us a social statement? But when it comes to Judaism, we're cutting corners. We're going for the cheapest, the easiest, the, the, the least expensive. Because why, why would you do that? And Hashem says, would you really do that for a friend? Would you, would you show honour to someone in that, in that way? And then Hashem continues, you say, behold, this offering is so burdensome. And so you annoy Hashem. 
You bring the stolen and the lame and the sick animal and bring it as an offering. Shall I accept that from your hand? So Hashem says, Cursed be the charlatan who has a superior ram in his flock, but vows and sacrifices a blemished animal. For I am a great king, says Hashem, and my name is awesome among the nations. The prophecy gets stronger and stronger and the Jewish people got their, get their telling off. But we do know, and this is what we're going to hold on to, and this is from this week's Haftarah. There will be a time, the days are coming, when things will change. Elijah the prophet is going to be sent before that great and awesome day. He will turn back to God the hearts of the fathers with their sons and the hearts of the sons with their fathers. Go back to that initial opening gambit. A son will honor his father. Yes, it's going to, everyone's going to, the relationships are going to improve. Society will heal itself. And Hashem's going to send this messenger, Elijah, before the Mashiach comes. And we, we daven that these moments of crisis will pass. But we have to learn from our sources. With the words are speaking out from the page. When it came to coming out of Egypt, we just had to go. Now is not said by coming out of Mitzrayim, going into the sea. Just travel. Just get on with it. To, to, to be paralyzed with fear is never the response. But to recognize that perhaps we need to think through very carefully how those institutions and norms of cultural behavior would have been shown to be false and everything's come to an end and weddings are now 10 people and there's no kiddushin with huge tables spread out with different types of delicacies because what would our friends say? Let's appreciate going to shul. Let's appreciate our society. Let's work on how we can rehabilitate ourselves. We re rehabilitate our Judaism, understand it differently. And let's hope we merit to those final words of the Hatara, the coming of Eliyahu, which will bring a harbinger to Mashiach and better times for ourselves and for all humanity. Have a nice day.